Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to another episode of an honestly very hard challenge. In the last episode, Nicole began to amass her army as she's preparing to leave for the Deadly Hills. She knows that she's going to need plenty of creatures with strength on their side, because unfortunately Nicole herself is very, very weak. So if she's not careful, she might end up perishing to the claws of the Baryenas. And that's why she's seeking the help of creatures like Sheba. Sheba has a Baryena claw too, and that makes her very, very strong. Not to mention, she was pretty easy to convince as well. Sheba is just looking forward to finally tasting the cool, fresh air of the grasslands. No more of this hot savanna sun for her. And then as for Comet, as he is our god of sacrifice, or at the very least connected to him in some way, we know that he would look out for his tribe no matter what. So Nicole has convinced him to come with her to ensure that the tribe will have plenty of oak trees to settle beneath. Right now he's trying his best to catch some fish for the tribe too, probably as a way to bring some food with them. So let's have him swim over here. It should still be safe and then he'll actually be able to reach some of these fish. There we go, Comet. Now at least we're up to 50 pieces of food again. I guess we'll want to make sure that we're collecting our coconuts too, and I know that plenty of our other tribe mates are going to help each other out with these. So let's have Coca-Cola go ahead and maybe grab this one? Unless perhaps somebody else could knock down a few more. It looks like everybody else is a little bit too tired out of the heat right now anyways, so you know what Coca-Cola, go ahead and grab this one for us. And then I guess we'll have you pick up the grass for now. In fact, let's have everybody just clear out the grasses, that way it'll be easier for us to get to the food. We could have Bandersnatch come on over here and grab this coconut. Keeping an eye on Nicole, perhaps? He still knows that something is up with the little scorpion. For that matter, I'm sure that word is eventually going to spread to Baron, too. He still has very, very high hopes for his daughter, but it's all based around what she can do on this island. After all, he still believes her to be some sort of prophet and he doesn't want her to go back to that awful place. The same place where his mate died, the same place where he saw so many terrible omens. So if he hears that she's thinking about leaving, he's definitely going to have a few choice of words to say to her. In fact, I wonder if he would actually send Celestite somewhere else, just so he could have a moment alone with his daughter. Let's have her creep back here into the grasses. That way she can still observe, but he won't know that she's there. She has, after all, been rather drawn to the Prophet for some reason. Ever since these two crossed paths, it's been hard for him to shake her. He hasn't read any further into it, though, because he's so worried about Nicole. So even now, he's just blind to the signs right in front of his face. In fact, I did just see a little clown koi skittering off into the algae. But I'm sure that you didn't notice. Let's go ahead and have you pick up the algae over here, I guess. That way you can try to search around some more of the fish. Yeah, everything is looking pretty quiet right now. So all that we have left is for Clyde to move, and Cherubo too, of course. I believe Cherubo was actually going to come on over here to help out Smoke. They were going to see if maybe they could work together to grab a few more of these coconuts. So we'll see what they can do in the next turn. And as for you, Clyde? Yeah, still none of those roots. So I guess it's just a peaceful day by Sheba's side. I guess this is probably going to be your last chance to catch up with her. We'll bring you right over to the shade of the tree, I guess. Let's have you settle down beneath the branches, too. That way you'll have all of your energy for the morning, and you should be able to help out with the coconuts as well. So we should be ready to skip the day now. While Baron does still have plenty of energy left, all of that is going to be spent calling out for his daughter. We'll have Nicole make her way straight over to his side. As the clown koi watch on from a distance. Oh, how fitting that they're still hiding between the algae that he didn't pick. He probably doesn't even notice at all. And there's another clown koi over here too? Oh, interesting comment. You are just completely surrounded by clown koi. They're really trying to tell you something, but I just don't know what it could be. Well, Baron, let's have Nicole make her way to your side. Then we'll see what we can do about these palm trees. Smoke should actually have enough energy to jump on down here and knock down every last one of these coconuts for you. Then he could scoot on over here, which does leave him a little bit open to attacks from the leeches, but I'm sure that Cherubo will be watching. So we'll just have him scoot on over to the side and pick up the coconut right in front of him, and then I guess Bandersnatch, you might as well do the same. We could even have you come in over here to pick up those berries in the meantime too. And with Clyde's extra energy, he could really show his stuff. Maybe he was even a little bit inspired by watching Smoke's skills. These two are so similar. 
the only thing that smoke is missing is that running leg, of course. So I wonder if they're going to make some pretty fast friends too. But let's have you jump down here, Clyde. Show Sheba that you're going to be able to take care of yourself without her. You'll be able to find a place for yourself in this tribe, even if she's not by your side. And you know, I wonder if we should even consider breeding these two before we go? I mean, I guess it wouldn't be out of the question. Clyde has been like her knight in shining armor ever since she was little. So maybe she has developed some sort of feelings for him. You know what, Shiva? Let's make sure that we're taking at least one BB with us to the next island. There we go, despite your rather poor fertility. Thankfully, it looks like his is much higher. We just have to cross our fingers now that the BB will survive. So we'll have you... I guess stay in the shade for one more turn. You can go ahead and pick up the grasses as your mother grabs one last meal for you. I guess this might be her chance to explain what's going on, actually. We could bring Kakola over here and have Lumina jump in to pick up the rest of the grasses, too. She's going to have to explain to both Clyde and Kakola where she's going. I think they would be very supportive, though. Despite the fact that they don't know what's waiting in her future here, they've never seen these ports with their own eyes. And I wonder if that would actually cause them to feel a little bit concerned. Knowing that so many skeletons are littering these ports. Knowing who she's following, too. That eerie albino scorpion. Well, Comet, we should probably have you make your way out of the water, too. You've gathered up plenty of fish, and the clown koi seem to be gone. In fact, the only other clown koi is still over here watching Baron. So maybe it's time you regroup with your traveling partners. I guess we'll have him leap out of the water and ask Nicole for instructions. But as Baron and Nicole are looking for a little bit of privacy right now, she would probably tell him to go to the ports. Maybe he could group up with Sheba, in fact. Let's have him jump on down here so he should be able to light up the way. We'll just have to be mindful of all these coconuts, of course. I guess you might as well get your feet wet. If you come over here, you don't have to worry about the coconuts hitting you on the head. And I'm pretty sure that would actually be like instant death for our creatures. They do take a little bit of damage when the coconuts hit them, so since we have full damage multipliers, that would make this even more of a tragedy. Oh, but these clown koi... They know what's going on, don't they, Baron? Trying desperately to stop you from leaving yourself exposed with your daughter. Trying desperately to get you to open your eyes. Because the more you push against her, the more she's going to push back. He must be trying to stop her from leaving. No matter what sort of ambition lies in her heart, he knows that her mission has to be here. It has to be by his side, right beneath the prophet's tree even. Surely it can't mean that you're supposed to go fight the bear Yinas. You're so small, Nicole. How could you ever hope to survive against them? So you know he would try to forbid her from going. But I don't think that's going to fly with Nicole. And in fact, so close to the water's edge like this, the old prophet might not be able to fight back. If she just gently pushed him into those harsh currents, scattering the clown koi right beneath his body, there's no way that the old prophet would be able to fight back. Nicole will show you her true potential. She is going to that island whether you like it or not, and now nobody will be able to stop her. So could Pie Baron, the prophet with a heart of gold, really. His heart was always in the right place, but maybe that's what caused him to be fooled in the end. I'm not sure if we've ever had a storyline where a creature has actually killed one of their own tribe mates before, so this is a little bit darker than I expected this series to turn. Especially considering that Nicole is his own daughter, and she is still pretty young too. But you know, the only creature would have seen that is Celestite herself. She's still hiding away in the grasses. The question is, is she going to let anybody know? I mean, Cherubo's right beside her. She has Smoke nearby, and of course, Prophet too. The one that she shares a pretty close connection with. To be honest, knowing Moon Eye, I think she would be a very silent sort. She would keep these secrets buried inside her, but that doesn't mean that she wouldn't help. In fact, maybe Celestite would vow to keep Comet safe to watch his back because she knows that he can get himself into plenty of trouble. As the god of sacrifice, it wouldn't actually take very much to put him in harm's way. So let's have Celestite tiptoe her way up the grasses. These two haven't spoken after all, so this would be her chance to let her know that she wants to go on this journey with her. She won't mention anything about the skeleton in the water, of course, Nicole, so you don't have to worry about that. 
She might be a little bit suspicious at first, but once she sees that bear Yinaklam, she'll know that Celestite has to go on this mission too. Oh, and of course, you, Romeo? You also appear to have a little bit of energy too. And you know, honestly, he probably had a front seat to this show, if only he was actually paying attention. I have a feeling that he's still gazing down at those fish in the water, picking his berries as he watches his own reflection. So you don't have to worry about silencing him, Nicole. Romeo is definitely no threat to you. So with all of that drama out of the way, let's go ahead and skip the day again, as we bring Nicole down to the ports on this turn. Or at least as close as she can possibly get. No wandering Baryinas either, excellent. I was a little bit worried with all the drama that maybe Anime would send somebody to test you, Nicole. But it seems like she's waiting for the next island. Oh, that's right, you're so fast with that lean body of yours, you could actually scoot right down here on this turn. You should be able to make it over to those ports after all. I guess we'll try our best to bring Celestite after you, but she only has one gem to work with. The poor thing is just too tired. It's probably a lot, to be honest. I mean, keeping all of these secrets bottled inside her like this, eventually they're sure to burst out. Let's have Cherubo go ahead and gather up these berries for you. Maybe that'll give you a little push of energy. As he grabs the coconuts too. This is going to be our last chance to gather any food here. So I guess Lumina could probably scoot on over to the other side. We'll need somebody else with the nimble fingers to collect these after all. She can help our meet Bandersnatch. These two haven't spent too much time together since the birth of their baby. Oh, now she's just about to leave you too. Now you two are going to be empty nesters. I suppose there's always a chance that they could continue their family. Once Celestite has left them, they will still have a little bit of time left on their lifespans. But I kind of feel like the birth of Celestite had really put them off from continuing their family. It was such a shock to know that the goddess of death herself was watching over them especially after losing their first baby too. So maybe they would just be happier living out this quiet life by the shore. Well, I'm sure Lumina would be happier living out her quiet life right beneath the shade of the tree. Not quite so close to the ocean, where she could easily pick up a leech. We'll have Coca-Cola jump down here to pick up these coconuts on the next turn. And then Clyde, I think you're probably going to have to move into the shade again. We'll make sure that you have plenty of energy for the next turn too. So Sheba, it's finally time for you to say goodbye to your family. A sad, mournful goodbye with Clyde, whose baby you're going to be taking with you, as you join up with Nicole again. I guess we probably want to make sure that we're not setting up our creatures too close to the water's edge. Granted, we haven't seen too many leeches, so we might be okay. But let's at least have Nicole jump over here. She deserves to be the very first creature to plant her feet down on these ports again. And you know... This piranha fish has not moved one single inch. This was exactly where Baron saw him before. And how interesting too, do you see that connection now? He saw a piranha fish in the water, and the water ended up being the death of him. If only he could have read the signs. Nicole is going to have to tread very, very carefully though. We know that Animium values family above everything else. Her whole story was about how she protected her family no matter what life threw their way. So if she catches wind about Nicole's betrayal, I have a feeling that Animeme is going to make the Deadly Hills very, very difficult for you. Now Sheba, we should be able to move you right about here, so you'll be able to leap over to the ports in the next turn too. And then we're just going to be waiting for Celestite. So go ahead and pick your berries again, Romeo. That one last berry. Try again to grab some of those fish. You know, I'm starting to think the Clown Koi actually want you to reunite with the tribe. They don't appreciate you living on the outskirts like this. I know he's hoping to find himself a partner out here, but I guess they're more afraid of the Baryinas. So that should be the end of this turn too. Let's go ahead and skip the day again. And cross our fingers that everything is going to be fine on this side of the island. Still no leeches, still no Baryinas. Yeah, seems like it's going to be a pretty peaceful passage for us. At least Animeme is letting us leave calmly, but that's probably only because she has so much in store for the next island. So Nicole, go ahead and jump over to the middle here so you should be able to lead everybody over to the next island. And then Sheba, let's set you up right here. Oh my gosh! And you finally found our very first water-breathing plan? 
Oh, it's only too bad that it's so deep in the water like this. I mean, if it was a little bit closer, then it wouldn't be so risky to reach in and grab it. Then we could have our creatures start swimming in the actual oasis too. It would be so much easier for them to catch fish that way. Oh, what a bummer. As soon as we're leaving, of course that's when we end up finding it. That could be a good sign for her though. Maybe it's a sign that she needs to keep her family by the water's edge. I can't quite remember how the landscape of the Deadly Hills looks, but if we can find a stream or something, maybe that's going to be Sheba's best place to thrive. So, yet again, this is going to be our last chance to gather up food here. Let's have Coca-Cola dip her feet into the water too, so she can grab this coconut right here. We'll have Clyde jump down to knock down a few more and jump on back before he hits his head. Now, Lumina, are you feeling brave enough to get closer to the water's edge? I guess with Coca-Cola right in front of you, you know that there are plenty of creatures watching your back here. Oh my gosh, Bandersnatch. Did I actually leave you directly under the coconut tree? Oh, you are so lucky that didn't end in tragedy. I did not even notice that you were there. Well, Celeste, I... Oh no, can you not make it over to the beach? Oh, she must be so worried about her father. It's okay. I know you're not going to be here to make sure that he passes peacefully. And that must be pretty hard for you. But right now it is a little bit more important that you watch Comet's back. So with the very final strands of grass cleared out, we'll have Smoke skitter on down to the water's edge to wait for a few more of those roots to spawn too. I think we should be ready to skip our very final day on this island. Oh my gosh, and how fitting is this? Nicole, it looks like you have your third and final gem. Excellent. So please tell me. Yeah, it looks like Celeste I can just about jump over here, which means every last one of these ports is full now. Now, I'm still not 100% sure that this is even going to lead us to the Deadly Hills, but I have my fingers crossed. I guess it could also potentially be the Crossing Island instead, which would be a pretty big bummer. But if this is the Deadly Hills, then I would expect this is probably going to be our last big story arc in the series. Once we conquer the Deadly Hills, there's pretty much nothing left for us to do in this challenge, so it all depends if we can survive there. So this is it. What sort of mysteries await us on this brand new island? I'm sure only the Keeper of Bones herself will know. Let's go ahead and travel and see where it's going to lead us. Please tell me this is going to be the Deadly Hills. We'll know right away if it's a crossing island because of that place is so small. I think the Deadly Hills is actually a pretty big island, too. Oh, and this definitely looks like the Deadly Hills. Yes, I think we actually made it. Oh, perfect. Look how gigantic this place is. And Comet hasn't disappointed either. We actually have four separate oak trees. There's even one way, way out here in the ocean. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine how nerve-wracking it would be to get here, though? to cross that large gap of water. Our creatures wouldn't have to worry about drowning because it does look pretty shallow, but you know there are plenty of leeches in that water too. Oh, Comet, and there's even one of these oak trees right next to the ports too. So that's probably where our creatures are going to want to go first. This will be their very first base. And then from there, the families can branch off to find different places. Goodness knows we're probably going to have to run away from this place quickly. If a killer baryena comes around, we are going to be in some serious danger. I'm not sure that our creatures are strong enough to take down the killer Berginas yet, since our strongest creature only has a 5 in strength, and I'm not 100% sure how much defense they have on them. Our first few generations here are going to be very, very risky. All we can do is hope that Mist is watching our backs. Since we're in the grasslands again now, I guess that means that we could actually see the peaceful bear again too. Oh, look at this. We have a little crabbit right off the bat ready to greet us. Shells in the water, and I even saw a little root here too. But unfortunately, without your love, Clyde, it doesn't seem like anybody is going to be able to gather that for you. So Sheba, let's just have you move on over here. We'll have you sniff deep into the grasses. Oh, as you unveil our very first healing fruit. Now again, this isn't really going to mean too much to our tribe. Because if they get injured, they're going to be dead anyways, so it's not as though we can heal our tribe mates. 
but that does mean it's a very, very good place for us to settle down. Maybe this alone will be able to protect our babies from future sicknesses. So Sheba, let's have you follow the trail. In fact, let's just have you go right underneath the tree. Oh my gosh, Sheba. That is a very, very opportune place for those to spawn. I wonder if they would even remember those old traditions. It must be buried in one of their families, right? Jasmine and Orion. Oh my gosh, and leeches. Celestite, good thing you were watching. I know that comment would have helped you, of course, but it's always good to have an eye open for yourself, too. But yeah, I am kind of drawing a blank right now. We had Romeo, who was Vine's baby, and Vine was Orion's son, and Orion was actually the original creature who guarded the healing fruits. So I guess that means the closest connection would actually be in Nicole right here, simply because Kaya was her mother, so surely she would know at least a little bit about those old traditions. I guess that kind of makes sense, too. As the Keeper of the Bones, if any babies pass away under her watch, we would have to spare her a pretty suspicious glance. So it's definitely not out of the question to assume that she would take full control of these healing fruits. But Comet, we don't want you to be last here. Let's have you go right underneath this tree, and we'll have you make sure that everything is safe and sound. Well, looks like we have a poison berry bush back here, but that's not going to be too helpful for you. We'll have you come on over here so you can at least clear out the area. And maybe we could even see if there are some permanent nests around here too. That way we won't have to break into our own nesting material. So I think we're ready to skip our very first turn on the Deadly Hills. Surely the safe haven is going to hold true for at least one night, right? No Bariginas in our midst yet. No Bariginas, but I do see a little acorn back there. It's actually going to be a little bit difficult for us to make our way over there too, thanks to this rock that's in the way. So for now, Comet, let's have you come on over here so you can start clearing out the safe haven for us. And of course, Nicole is going to spend all of her attention on these healing fruits. I wonder if Celestite would actually stay here too? I mean, again, if she's drawn toward death, and if that's what's on the back of Nicole's mind right now, she is going to be keeping the closest eye on our little albino scorpion. After all, she knows exactly what will happen if she lets her out of her sight. I feel like Sheba's probably just happy to finally be out of that hot sun, though. In fact, she would probably be a little bit more open to exploring. Coming on over here to pick up these acorns. And I believe on the next turn, she should be able to build her own nest. So yeah, we might as well have her build her nest right here, right where she picked up the acorn before. As long as nothing dangerous spawns here while we skip the day. Oh, and we even have another one of these healing fruits over here, too. Excellent. And it looks like there's a bunny over here for one of our creatures to hunt. That would probably be best reserved for you, Comet, since you do have that running leg and the claw, too. So you should be able to take down the bunnies with ease. I guess it really depends where it runs, though. And we do want Sheba to move first. So we'll bring you over here to gobble up the healing fruit and plant down your very own nest. An age-old tradition passed on from Nicole. But whether or not that's truly going to age you has yet to be determined. Who knows if she's tainted that tradition with her own ambition, too. Now, is the little bunny still there? Well, looks like he's hopping a little bit closer to the shore, so you're going to have to be careful. Let's actually have Celestite jump over here so she can light up the way for Comet. Can you catch up to the bunny bunny chance? Yes, excellent. It looks like you just surprised it. So go ahead and swipe up our very first bunny, and maybe on the next turn, Celestite could actually grab the meat for you. That way you can still continue to search for some more resources. So one more time, let's go ahead and skip the day. I'm very, very curious to see if this baby is going to survive at all. Hopefully that tradition has worked for us. Yes, it looks like it has. Oh, stone, and it looks like you have some pretty amazing strength, too. A five in strength, just like Celestite. So he's going to be one of our biggest lines of defense here. And of course, that digging paw, just like his father. That's pretty excellent, too. With all the roots that we have littered around this place, you're going to be a pretty big source of food for us as well. An excellent guard and an excellent collector. So you should be pretty proud of yourself, Sheba. There's no doubt that your baby is going to help us survive here well, assuming that Nicole doesn't get to him first anyways. I mean, if there's strength involved, you know that she is definitely watching. 
So as she hoards both of these healing fruits before her, and as she casts a curious glance over the edge of the rock too, I wonder if she thinks that this baby would make an excellent scout for her mission, an excellent way for us to find the bear Yunas that she's looking for. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!